Welcome back to episode 50 of the Guardian Project Podcast. I'm your host, Andy. And when I was trying to come up with my intro this week, I really couldn't make a decision on what route to go. There were so many options. It was just a whirlwind of thought. Ah, nice. I like it. I like it. And I'm your co-host, Mike Coyle. And the other day I saw someone playing a Tyum Luminous Enigma deck. And I looked at their board and I said, do all of your creatures have vigilance? Damn right they do. (laughs) Please listen carefully. (laughs) And this this is the podcast where we talk about all things Magic the Gathering. But mostly Commander. (laughs) And before we start, we want to thank our patrons. Uh, We appreciate all of your support. If you want to support us, you can head to patreon.com slash guardianprojectpod and donate at any dollar amount. We have lots of fun things to give away um, and prizes, so come, come support us. We appreciate it. And if you're looking for a different way to support us, you can always leave a like, a comment, uh, subscribe, wherever you are listening. We also have a TCG Player uh, affiliate. And we have a TCG Player affiliate link located on our website at guardianprojectpodcast.com. So if you're looking for any singles or sealed product and you plan on buying them through TCG Player, please use our link. Use the link. We appreciate it. Um, What are we talking about this week? Uh, This week we are going to talk about the Secret Lair Summer Drop. Um, It's pretty big. There's a few of them that are coming out. We are going to talk about the announcement of the newest announced set i don't think it's the next set but the newest we're announced going set, to announce the announcement they're gonna we're gonna announce the announcement about the announcement about double masters okay which there was two announcements about there it, were two announcements there were two and for our main segment today we are going to talk about how we manage our commander decks both physically and digitally perfect and commander of the week i built otrimi the ever playful upgraded and yeah I'm, which you saw what uh, we, we streamed it a little bit uh, last week, and then we're going to stream it again tonight. Yeah, and I liked how that deck performed on its first go, so I'm excited and for num- go two. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit about that after after you go through the deck. We can talk about a very fun interaction we found with uh, a card that I played. So um, a ruling that I had um, enjoyed a lot because it worked out in my favor. I'm so sure. Stay tuned. Yeah, yeah, stay absolutely. tuned. <laughs> so. Um, the Secret Layer Summer Super Drop. Say that yeah. five times fast. Summer Super Drop. Se- Secret Layer Summer Super Drop um, is coming in June. Um, so um, there are five different drops, uh, just like uh, we originally saw. Um, you can buy them separately. You can buy them as a bundle. Obviously, you get um, it's it's a better price if you buy it as a total bundle. Um, as we mentioned before, when they were previewing this, um, buying it as a total bundle, you also get a, one of the enemy fetch lands included, uh, random, which is great. Those have those awesome arts. Um, so there are five drops coming. Um, you have the full sleeves, the tattoo pack, which comes with spell pierce, blood artist, eternal witness, pithing needle, and ink moth nexus, all with um, American tattoo style artworks. Um, they're all uh, alternate arts. Um, none are foil, uh, if that's relevant. Coil likes non-foil. It's very okay. <laughs> and then you have uh, the drop, Can You Feel with a Heart of Steel with a foil alternate art, Arcfound Ravager, Dark Steel Colossus, and Walking Ballista. Uh, third is the Path Not Traveled, which uh, was a really cool preview on Twitter. They were um, previewed by cosplayers um, who... Um, dressed up as these characters. So there's a Johnny Steadfast, Domri Raid, Tamio Field Researcher, and Vraska Golgari Queen. Um, these are foil alternate arts. Um, the next one, which is a pretty classic one, Mountain Go. It's just four lightning bolts. It's pretty All different great. artworks. Um, it's, a, it's a play set. And if you play modern... Um, You're going you to want to buy play, four of these. <laughs> You're going to want to buy four of these or... You can play different artworks. Who cares? If you're playing Lightning Bolt, they know you have four, right? And then it's like in game two, it's a trick on them because you they're like, wait, which artwork did I see in game one? 
does he really have four? And I you're mean, like, no, joke's on you. I only run three. But then I, you're making a mistake, I think, so don't run four. As, all, as long as you're also mixing in full art basics with your regular basics in that deck, go for it. Go for it. And then the last the last secret layer drop is Ornithological Studies. It's a which mouthful. Is, it's a mouthful. And actually, I think of these, this, one, this one's my favorite. So um, for, for this, the announcement says that um, of all of Magic's uh, fictional creatures, birds are far and away the most popular. Um, and they said they thought it would be cool to envision what bir- these birds would look like if they existed in real life. So they commissioned um, naturalistic and classical illustrations um, for, for these cards. So this comes with Swan Song, Birds of Paradise, Gilded Goose, Baleful Strix, and the card Dovescape. So um, the first one, I guess, uh, is the, yeah, the tattoo pack is from um, on sale June 1st and June 2nd, um, and then June 2nd and 3rd, uh, and, and so on. And then you can buy the super drop from June 1st through June 15th. So you have a, a, a more extended uh, period of time to buy, buy that, and that comes with that um, fetch land. So I actually think that these are worth the values, right? So if we, let's look at the first one. So the, the the full sleeve tattoo pack comes with two commander staples. I guess if you play modern, you have the Ink Moth Nexus. Um, if you're playing competitive decks, like CEDH does play Spell Pierce. Um, yeah. This is, this, uh, this one's 30 bucks. And if you're gonna use four of the cards potentially, um, well worth the value. I think these artworks for Blood Artist and Eternal Witness are going to those are going to be popular. So I, I feel like on the secondary market, they might be a little pricey if you're looking to just pick those up as singles. Um, but I really do like these ones. And this is this is one of the rare times I would actually consider picking up a playset of that Ink Moth Nexus art to play in my like Infect Modern deck, especially since yeah. it's non-foil and you don't have any issues with like some of your cards warping and some of your cards not warping. So right. yeah, no, it's, it's and then- such a sweet artwork. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I do really, really like that artwork. The second one, which is Arcbound Ravager, Darkseal Colossus, Walking Ballista, that one's $40. Um, the only card in, in this that I play in Commander is Walking Ballista. It does have it does combo with a few different cards. This 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 card also combos with um the new Heliod. So if you're playing mm-hmm. that deck, um this is a very good card dark steel colossus is very popular in commander arcbound ravager is played in modern i think if you need these cards this is a good pickup if you don't need them obviously you can pick up a single here but i think that walking ballista if you're playing if you play a deck that plays that 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 combo it might be worth picking this up oh for sure beside need needless to say the sweet artwork that these cards have yeah the walking ballista looks like a transformer yes it does it sure does, and it's really cool because it's got two giant cannons on the back of it. Two giant cannons. The path not traveled, so you've got Johnny Steadfast, Domi Raid, Tamio Field Research, and Vraska Golgari Queen is 40 bucks. I play Domi Raid, Tamio, and Vraska in Commander decks already. Mm-hmm. Um, I will be picking this up. Um, a Johnny Steadfast is, 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 is a good card. I just don't play it. Um, or actually, no, I lied. I do. I play that also in my in my commander. I play all four of these. Mm-hmm. I play all four of these in commander decks. If you're playing Super Friends, it's great. If you just want to collect uh, Planeswalkers in situations where um, they they hadn't um, traveled to, doing things that they haven't done before, where Domri is a um, cowboy mm-hmm. um, and Vraska is going to prom, mm-hmm. um, it, this is really cool. I, I really like these artworks as yes. well. Tamio as Carmen San Diego, or just an investigator, and Ajani as Cyclops from X Men is really <laughs> awesome. Where in the world is Tamio San Diego? <laughs> I hope she's not in your hand, because then I lose. The, I mean that. That's the that strongest play season. Talk. Strongest play talk. The strong is she the strongest play Her her, her 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 ultimate. I guess no. Her ultimate is not an instant win. It's where, omniscience, though, that you can't interact with, so that's is, wonderful. It's super... It is <laughs> top three. Top three Planeswalker ultimates, for sure. Sure. The the Mountain Secret layer drop is 30 bucks if you're looking to, to buy a playset of Mountain... Or, uh, I'm sorry, of Lightning Bolts. You can get them cheaper. If you want these four artworks, then this is for you. This one is... I think of all of them, this is the one that I will use the least. I have a modern deck that plays with four Lightning Bolts but I don't play with Lightning Bolt and Commander personally. 
No, it's too limited. And then um, ornithological studies, I think I will get the, m the second most out of. Um, this is for 30 bucks, you get swan song, birds of paradise, gilded goose, baleful strix, and dovescape. You know, um, swan song is, is an expensive card. I, yeah. I'm pretty sure that right now it goes for, um, I mean, it's like almost 10 bucks, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. That sounds right. So being almost $10 already in just one card, Birds of Paradise, this this artwork will probably, most of these are going to to fetch a, a nice price. I assume they'll they'll probably be like 10 bucks or something. Mm -hmm. um, I think I think you're safe to go. If you're, if you're looking to buy these and not lose out or lose value, this one is definitely a solid purchase. I totally agree. It, Dovescape is the only card in this set that I don't use in a deck somewhere, so. I don't use Dovescape. There's there's Dovescape like locks where you right. everybody and but um I I don't play like that in 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 Commander with Dovescape. I'll make it so you can't swing at me. I'll lock you out that way. I don't sure. want to get swung at. Yeah. But I'm not gonna count every spell and give give people silly little birds. <laughs> silly little birds that'll smack you in the face and kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yes. Yes, they will. So if you're looking for the summer super drop that comes in uh, just a couple of weeks, actually not even a couple of weeks, no, Monday that, that goes on sale on Monday. And um, I know that people are now getting confirmations on receiving their uh, Theros gods and they are getting their um, International Women's Day. Yes. Um, so I assume that if you're looking to get these real fast, um, they I would assume they probably have a few of these already printed. Um, so if you're or you're ordering like the minute you possibly can at 9 a.m. Pacific time, so um, on June 1st, you can you'll you'll probably get your order in a couple of days. I I would assume, um, but I think this is great a, a great drop. Um, I will probably buy a, a bundle. Yeah, I'm interested in a lot. I don't know if I would get the whole thing. Um... But yeah, there's a lot of singles I'm interested I in. I like Fetchlands. So. I like those arts. Chance of me getting that Misty Rainforest with that sweet, sweet artwork. You know, I can't I can't resist just getting that. Yeah, where, where a normal Misty Rainforest is already going up to like $120. Then you have this artwork. Mm. Right. Mm. So the greed monster. <laughs> we have another set that was spoiled, Double Masters, so much that it was uh, announced two times. It was double announced for Double Masters. Double announced, a set that includes two rares in every pack mm -hmm. and two foil cards in every pack. And in each booster box, there are two non-foil borderless showcase box toppers. 24 packs per booster box. Um, the cards that they already spoiled were, um, Doubling Season and Blightsteel Colossus. Right. So, um, they are very popular cards. Doubling Season is like a commander staple. If you're playing with counters or with creature tokens, um, you you probably only need a copy of Doubling Season. I like, I hate switching my decks around. So I, I do purchase a few copies of, of a lot of cards. I just, I personally just don't like moving them around because then I forget which deck they're in and then I feel like I lose them and you have a little panic attack because doubling season is a $60 card. Mm -hmm. Where did mm -hmm. my doubling season go? Um, but there's been some, uh, there's been some drama yeah. about the prices of these cards. Yeah, so I I actually only saw little hints and whispers of the the pricing thing, and I was trying to find if they um, like the whole MSRP versus what the store is actually going to sell them for. Um, I didn't yeah. find anything concrete though, personally. I mean, Magic did away with MSRP, so right? They don't they don't they don't give that to you, and I think. The the best bet was that you could purchase card. I guess what most people were doing was they were looking at the prices on Amazon, mm. which appeared to to have a box listed around three hundred dollars and an individual pack at like sixteen dollars. Yep. Um, which is um, obviously um, triple the price of a normal booster pack. So it's a premium product because it's a master set, which sure. is totally understandable. Yep. Um, but but knowing that that was what you can assume as a pre-release price through Amazon, mm. your booster boxes are probably going to be more expensive. I, you know, 
based on based on uh, things that have happened in the past. For sure. Um, if the demand is there, um, that that price is going to go up, and it's supposed to be a a good um, draft set. And you know, I mean, I think I've already said it on the podcast, and if I haven't. I'll say it now. I personally don't want to spend that amount of money, even though I can afford it, right? There's people talking about these sets are for whales. We need to make stuff for whales. Whales being people that have expendable income. You know, income. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I have some. I have 28 commander decks that we'll talk about later. <laughs> that it was expensive yeah. to make 28 commander decks. You know, I bought. I bought a case of Acoria because I like to play sealed at home. I like to draft, but I also like to just open packs sometimes. So sure. I'm just going to open a box. That was expensive. Mm-hmm. and I. But that was expensive to get six boxes of 36 cards in a pack. And you can build almost anything. You're almost guaranteed. Yeah, you're not guaranteed. But it feels like you're almost guaranteed to get each of the cards you wanted for Commander when you buy that product. I'm not... I personally am not willing to spend triple the price for less product right because you're getting less packs you um but you're getting i mean the argument is you're getting a, a better shot at cards that are maybe worth way more right you could open mm-hmm. a doubling season uh you could open two doubling seasons in a pack i assume yeah yeah they said uh, that was possible I, I guess you could potentially open four doubling seasons if you get two foil doubling seasons that's crazy <laughs> so i hope if somebody opens two foil and two non-foil doubling seasons they would tweet that i assume it will happen if someone does that there's gonna be a picture somewhere there's gotta be but double 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 toil and trouble was yeah. a disney movie i think with mary kate and ashley Olsen. okay i'm gonna take your word for it <laughs> I don't know if it's <laughs> nope it's fact now if you're listening to this fact <laughs> Okay, I don't know if it's Disney, but I do know Mary Kate and Ashley all somewhere in that movie. Okay, so um, you know, I, I don't know what I mean. You buy a lot of Masters product, but Modern Horizons was a really good set for that, right? I no one knows if Double Masters is going to be as good as Modern Horizons, but well, Modern Horizons wasn't. Modern, I, I don't even remember how much that cost so modern horizons was actually a pretty decently priced um master's set if you will it wasn't technically a master master set it was a modern set and there was no reprints you're right it wasn't a master set but it felt like one right uh because it went straight to modern um and it skipped standard and that's exactly what a master set is but it saw no reprints in in modern horizons it were all brand new cards and this is going to be i don't know if they said exclusively but most likely almost exclusively reprints I know. I'm, this is this is reprints yeah. exclusively reprints. So that's the big difference from Modern Horizons. Modern Horizons was a ton of fun, really, really, really good set. Um, this is going to be reprints that they're going to have to do into drafting. I've never drafted with master sets before. They seem well put together, at least when I look at um, like uh, iconic, not iconic masters, the latest ma- Ultimate Masters. When I look at Ultimate Masters, it looks really put together for a draft set. So. Um, Again, personally, I don't have any experience drafting the Masters sets, and Modern Horizons was a whole different beast. This one, I don't know. Would you be excited to open a Blightsteel Colossus when you're drafting? You gonna get to twelve mana? Um, I assume that if it's if it's if it's in there, there's probably a way to get to it. Perhaps there's another card that's being reprinted in here that is going to make it so that you can draft both of them. You can sneak happy. attack it out or something. Sure. I wouldn't be mad about opening a Blightsteel Colossus. They're they're an expansive card. Yeah, Blightsteel so, Colossus is the real um, the real artwork for Double Masters because they're double reprinting it this year right now in both the Summer Drop as well as Double Masters. So it's being reprinted twice. So it's double, 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 double. double. Yeah. Um, I I have never drafted um, a master set either. Um, mostly because uh, when when you go to your LGS to draft a master set, sometimes they're charging you forty dollars for a draft, and yeah. you could open three fifty cent rares, and I'm not about that. Now we, we've talked. I, I I think I've seen many people talk about this on Twitter, and um, they said when you draft, do you draft to have fun? Do you draft to get a value card? Do you draft hoping? You know, I think 
I think it's a combination of both, right? You're, you're happy. Would you be upset if you opened three 50 cent rares and lost every game? Yes. Would you be upset if you opened one $75 foil rare or mythic and lost every game? No, you wouldn't be mad. No, because not you at all. just made $75. Mm-hmm. You can sell it and, and play probably another two. You don't even drafts. have to play. If you don't want to. You just go play Commander and shove that card in it because you, it's mm-hmm. the doubling season that you opened or something. Just sell it. Just sell it. No, I put it in decks. Buy it's more cards. But I, this, that, I, I just I like drafting a lot. Um, I don't like the price of this. Right. So it's, it's just been interesting seeing everybody's opinions on this. They also confirmed fetches are not in this set. Fetches will be printed later this year. And from what... From what everybody's saying is either it could be a box topper in Zendikar or it could be in Commander Legends. Those are the only two options at this point. Commander Legends would be cool. Commander Legends would be great, right? Because it's a set for Commander and Mm -hmm. it's going to be opened a lot, Mm -hmm. meaning people will hopefully uh, open a ton to lower those prices Um, or it'll be a box topper in some set. Yeah, you don't. So they they already confirmed they're not bringing back masterpieces and stuff like that, right? So it won't be a return to the um, Where expedition they're in lands. regular booster. Yeah, no, I don't believe. I don't remember reading that. Did they confirm that that we I, won't see those? Anymore? I think this I think is the they new... I think they did a long time ago. I think after the Amonkhet block, they're like, "We're sorry, it was a mistake." When really, I don't think it was. But it, I mean, it brought standard just... prices down a lot. Yeah, yeah. I just, I would like to see, um, I agree with everyone. I'd like to see, I owning a play set of all 10 fetches because I bought them when they had shot way down in price when they were reprinted in Modern Masters 2017. Pretty sure it was 17. Um, I picked up a play set when they had hit the rock bottom that, that what they were going to, which was not rock bottom. It was still no, expensive. Still expensive. I, I'm not going to be upset if the prices of these plummet because from what we've seen in the past, they get reprinted, they get gobbled up because everybody can afford them now. They literally leave and then they shoot back up. Fetches are more expensive now. Those fetches that were reprinted in Modern Masters are more expensive now than than they were before they were in Modern Masters. So you're going to make your money back. Just put them in there. So what if they... Go ahead. I was going to say, I would... If they sold... Double Masters at $4 a pack. Mm-hmm. I would buy a case, right? Yeah. But now I won't buy any. And I'm sure I'm not alone. So if they lowered that price, they might potentially sell even more. But they do protect the aftermarket pretty heavily. With but they're not the allowed to talk about it. Right. But they still do it. Sure. Because the aftermarket, I mean, a lot of the aftermarket is their LGS. Uh, obviously, in today's day and age, there's a lot of single sellers out there, too, though. Mm-hmm. But they have to keep their LGSs alive as well with single sales. So they have to make sure that the aftermarket survives. So I understand from that point of view, but you're definitely not wrong. They would sell more if it they was They would cheaper. make more money if it was more affordable. I mean, and I'd buy it through my LGS. So my LGS would make more money as well. You know, these master sets always sell out, though. Because they're not print to demand. Well, that's true. If they wanted, if you want to do master sets print to demand, there could be Go a huge town. flooding problem. It could be a huge flooding problem. Well, everybody wants these cards. Right. That's why it's not print to demand. So they print it out of people's budgets. And then they, you can't have your cards. I mean, to set, for some people's budgets, yes. Sure. This is, I think it's, this is it's, Wizard's it's, way of making a lot of money. <laughs> I know. It's crazy. It's crazy. So it's, I'm just interested to see how, how this one shakes out and what it will actually cost when we attempt to buy a pack at yeah, e- LGS. Either way, I'm excited to at least see the spoilers <laughs> for it. <laughs> and we're going to have spoilers for that. And I think the Zendikar spoilers start in just a couple weeks too, don't they? Uh, I have are... no idea. I am pretty sure those are those are coming up. So th- so Zendikar is being released before Commander Legends, then. Correct. Zendikar Rising um, comes out in the third quarter. Okay, so when they take those, so they're printing Commander decks with that as well in Zendikar Rises. 
but this one's going to see most of the cards are from the standard set itself. I think they said like 70 some cards from the standard set itself and then it'll be 30 brand new cards. Um, that's where you're going to see the fetch land reprint, by the way, right there. Put it on the board. Which one? They're going to print fetch lands in the commander decks that release uh, alongside Zendikar. Ah, uh, gotcha. Along with gotcha. A, a bunch of weak draft chaff because they oh, have to you know, build all Zendikar- the decks from the standard <laughs> set. And it's not Zendikar Rising coming out. It's Core 2021 is what we're going to see. Well, never coming. mind. <laughs> Just, just kidding. That's the next set. Zendikar Rising is later. So we're going to see some Corset stuff. Corset to Fairy. Oh, all of a yeah. sudden I got really unexcited about <laughs> the Corset. Well, then let's change the subject yeah. to our main topic of um, managing our commander deck. So there's we posted on Twitter. Um, we, we, we reached out to ask how many commander decks people owned that were currently built and like they could basically play them today and we got we got a lot of responses i think i think we got nearly 90 responses something like that and um we got responses ranging from one like one really tuned deck that's expensive all the way to um cure for the common game responded and he's he's got a twitter account known for attempting to build one commander for every single commander that that exists one deck Hmm. and he's got 565 commander decks it's a lot of commander decks so we are ranging from one to 565 yeah we were going to talk about where we fall and then all of the work that goes into managing those decks so um i spent a long time cataloging all my decks on architect um, we started doing we started using architect when we wanted to build budget decks with each other which was sometime last year in the before times it was in the before, and yeah. early before the bef- times early before times mm-hmm. and then and we logged those so that we could show what price and everything that we were going to have before we purchased the cards and then as we upgraded i said well i'm just going to throw all my decks onto here and it probably takes a good i would say it probably takes 45 minutes if you can do it pretty quickly um, to log a commander deck. Um, and I've logged all of mine now on Architect, and I have 28 commander decks built. It says 30, but I also have Brawl decks on here because okay. when we were when we stream Brawl, I would post the deck list, and I so I would build it on here as a commander deck. Um, so I have 28 commander decks, which is a lot. And I guess I didn't realize I had that many until I finally logged them, and then I looked at them. <laughs> How many commander decks do you have built right now? On Architect, I'm showing 18. I know some of these decks are not in physical form anymore, but I also looked to my right and counted all of my decks and counted 18. So the number's right. The content's wrong. So something is not logged yet. Then. Oh, that is that is correct. <laughs> that is that is correct. You just haven't. Well, I don't know if I delete a deck that I took apart honestly from Architect because then I know what I had at some point. Mm-hmm. But so currently built, I have twenty eight, and um, I have to manage them through Architect now. I cannot pull out seven decks anymore to figure out where my one fetch land is. Right. Or, you know, figure out where that one um, foil search for his Kanta is. I was like, I know I run search in two decks. Which one has it? I'm not I'm not going to sort through 200 cards to find it, um, which feels like a first world problem in all honesty. But it's it, just it way is. easier to see it on Architect to just yeah. see your decks. Mm-hmm. Because I can't, I, I, I cannot manage them. You know, the other thing is knowing um, what's in my decks um, is easier to visualize on a screen than it is to lay out a hundred cards on the floor and look at them just for me yep. and building building decks i build them directly on architect now i know that you and judge anthony who's been on before uh you, you'll send me a, a picture of a list that you wrote out by hand you're like mm-hmm. which of these cards do you have yeah i'm like i totally get it i start on architect and i add and remove and then i just export to people so it but I will tell you, it is difficult managing 28 decks at one time. For sure. And when, when do So we wanted to talk about how often we play each deck, where we log them, how often we make updates, when do we decide to take a deck apart, and that's kind of what we're going to dive into today. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So 
Um, the first one is how often do we play each of our commander decks? I'm, uh, obviously, there are some that we love a little bit more than others. There's certain color combinations we want We have play. favorite children. Okay? Absolutely. I think most parents say that, and then they laugh and go, no, I don't. But they're really secretly Everyone do. Does. Oh, absolutely. I think that's the truth. <laughs> It's not even, it's, it, that is a fact. Everyone has a favorite child. If you're listening to this and you don't think so, you're lying to yourself. <laughs> so, back, and this is actually, I guess, kind of more complicated than just the statement of, of a favorite child because my favorite child for the longest time was Mono Black Reanimator. And I took it apart because my playgroup said, All you play is Mono Black Reanimator, play something else. So, I haven't played that in a very long time. Um, but yeah. You know, you're going to have your favorites. I like Sultai right now. I have two Sultai decks built that I really like playing. Um, I'm actually kind of, uh, you know, I like green right now, actually. I'm really wow. into green. I know. For for any other Magic the Gathering player, it's like, okay, yeah, sure, whatever, green. But for me, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Um, I'm just counting right now how many I have how many decks I have with each color. I could have, I, you know, I could have come prepared for this. I wasn't prepared for that, but it looks like red and green. I have the most of, mm. but I think I, it just visually looking at it, but I feel like I, I feel like the real truth is I probably do have blue and more. And when I look at the last time that I updated some of these decks, like I haven't updated my Edric spy master of trust deck since since the beginning of February. So I haven't even touched it in three months. But I haven't been playing it, right? Because Edric is a deck that I have built for our Commander League. Right. Because it's it's too strong to play with friends. It's just not... It's, it's, it's built for... It's built to attempt to win. Yeah. Right? And it's built because our league has a point system. So I think that also plays a factor when I decide or try to determine if I play my decks each equally because I don't. Right. I, I will say wholeheartedly my Nickel Bola Super Friends deck is absolutely my favorite deck to play that I own. And I never want to take it apart. But the shell is super strong, so you can't play it in every pot. I can't. I, I play it in usually game one of leagues. Our leagues are, are two, two games per night. Typically, mm-hmm. I'll play it in game one. And then if, uh, depending on which uh, LGS we're playing at, you either play with the same pod again or a different pod. But if it's the same pod and I play with in, in game one, I'll say, was that too strong? Should I weaken it down? And I'll adjust it from there. Um, but yeah, I, I don't get to play that one as much as I want to, despite it being my absolute favorite deck. Yeah, you know, I've been logging all of my decks for this year. Um, and um, I... I'm working on creating a tab where I can determine how many times I've played each deck um, just so that I can run a macro because it's very difficult to just try and filter an Excel file and then count. And if you spelled something wrong, I just, I have to work on this. But I, it looks like I did play Edric and Edric Spy Master of Trust and the Locust God more than any other deck this year. But when I started playing Commander from Home, I started looking at this list, which was affecting which deck I was playing, right. which is kind of nice to have. Um, I get logging as a pain in the butt sometimes. I mean, after every single game, I log what deck I played, what deck, I, what decks I played against, whether I won or I lost. And I'm going to start at the halfway mark because I didn't do it at the beginning, but I want at the halfway mark, mark which deck won. Um, and it doesn't matter... Um, who it is, I, I just want to have the information on which decks I see win more often than not, um, because I want to write an article at the end just talking about this experience. But I think that based on this, I started playing some of my other decks because I don't play them very often. But I also have decks that I don't play very often because people don't like losing to certain strategies. People get really mad losing to Voltron because you got targeted and then the Voltron deck just loses because they picked you off. Yep. So I try not to play. I don't have a. I have a Voltron deck in Lazav the Multifarious, mm-hmm. but Voltron is in. I'm really just doing twelve infect. Right. It's it's and so I say fast. It's twelve. I say it's twelve because he's going to have twelve power yeah. and not ten infect. Mm-hmm. So I say I deal twelve infect because he's unblockable, and then he deals twelve. It's also so, trample in case he can somehow block it, but. I, I guess that's true, but I don't play Lazav because people get upset 
losing to Lazav. Mm -hmm. So I have that, but the problem is that deck is not up to par with a competitive pod. Sure. It's, I mean, sometimes it's just too... So it's it's one of those in the middle decks where it's too weak to be in the strong table and too strong to be on the, you know, on the mid table. So yep. where do you fall? You're in that weird sphere where you just upset somebody when you kill them. So I don't play that one very often. Um, do you have decks that you don't play because it upsets people? Nickel Bola Super Friends, for sure. So it's, yeah. a, so it's it's the strongest Grixis control shell you can play. It It's literally Consultation Kess, and then you take out all the win conditions and the cantrips in Kess and replace them with Planeswalkers and put Nickel Bolas as the commander. It does have some super good synergies, and you can take three extra turns on turn four, and you're still going to lose <laughs> next turn because it's not that strong. But people hate playing against... Counter spells, mass destruction, cyclonic rift, um, and then when the planeswalkers start destroying your lands, stealing your permanents, and stripping your hands, people don't like that either. But that's just a Grixis thing; it's not really a planeswalker thing. Um, and then I know I don't play my Jorian deck a lot anymore because its entire goal is to dirtle until you can fast this Oracle. So the games are all always very long. Without there's going to be a lot of interaction, but maybe not a ton of like swinging and stuff because I just won't let you. Yeah, I think we talked about that once on the podcast a couple a couple of months ago. Everybody was over at our house playing Commander and I got knocked out and I said, I'm going to go upstairs and play some Arena real quick because I knew the game was not even close. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hold on, let me play some Arena. I just want to finish my daily quest. I had like two daily quests and said, let me just finish these. I'll be back in like a half hour. Yep. And I came back and I said, okay, you know, where, where's the game at? And I think everybody looked at me and said, well, Coils bounced the board twice and gained like 15 <laughs> life somehow. So we don't expect this to end anytime soon. And the game ended up going like two hours. Yep. yep. Yeah. When you came back down, the board state was identical. Life totals were a little bit different. And I was halfway through my library at that point. Yeah, it was just so I get not playing that. I also don't play my Talzimir Friend to Wolves deck mm. or Friend to Elves deck. Is it? No, it's Friend to Wolves. Friend to um, Wolves. Friend to Wolves. He He's makes Wolves. Friend to the Wolves. Yep. Friend to the Wolves. I don't play that because it's a Selesnia fight deck. Mm -hmm. it's, it's literally controlling other creature decks, which um, is upsetting also to some people. You know, it, I, I just played two creatures and you just killed both. I, I, I get it. Um, I understand, but I, I feel like you have to keep one person off all their creatures. And if someone's playing all weak creatures and someone keeps dropping things that have death touch, you can't fight the things with death touch. You have yep. to kill all the other things. So again, you're keeping one person down. So I think I play that deck a little less than I do the other decks because I just don't want to upset people. It's so surprising that a, like a deck like that, when it's just fighting and spot removal can be more hated than like my Morophon deck, which doesn't target anything. It just tries to go over. Right. right. I know so, I know you didn't like playing against, uh, maybe I'm putting words in your mouth, but you didn't like playing against my Galta deck. <laughs> but Well, the reason I didn't like playing against the Galta deck is because Coil will go, Galta, I'm going to swing at Andy. What the <laughs> F? Why? Every time. I think I, think I seriously played against that deck five times and mm -hmm. i think three times it was like you killed me with commander damage twice mm -hmm. and but it's because i just had no answers mm -hmm. but that's what i mean that's what a voltron deck does that's you what it does you know i mean i would i don't like playing against it but i don't dislike the deck i right. just don't like being targeted buy it but right. there's nothing you can do that's the deck strategy so that's why i don't play those decks anymore i just can't because i know how how much I don't like that strategy, so I don't play that strategy against other people. Mm. I I agree with you to a point. Uh, unfortunately, I did just build a theme deck built around a Voltron commander with Zergo. Yeah, but Helms it's Mutate. Master. We might. Oh no, no, no Zergo. Zergo. Yeah, my my Mardu deck. Zergo is commander damage dot deck. Um, he does. He will have an army of droids with him that could. You know, fill in that role in case someone plays uh, whatever that magi that new magistrate is. Make it so I can't cast my commander from the command Dr zone. Dr Dranith magistrate? Yeah, that thing. Yeah. So if someone plays that, then I have a backup strategy. But, I mean, I, I, maybe I'm going to run in 
to the issue. I would hate hating to play my theme deck that I built for fun as a theme because of the strategy that it has to take in order to win. I completely understand. So we'll see what happens there. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, So uh, another question, where do we log our decks? We log them on Archidect. Um, I also have my Noi and Dar deck on Tapped Out. I did used to use Tapped Out, um, but we wanted our decks to contribute to average building um, cards. Uh, I'm sorry, just to be swept into EDH Rec, we use it as a really great resource. And um, EDH Rec um, pulls cards from Architect, so I wanted to make sure that um, going forward that I use um, Architect. And it's a really good tool, and they're, they, they work on updates all the time. Um, they just added um, some features when you are adding or changing the sets of a card. They actually added the set symbol, so you don't have to just keep scrolling for the name. You can find the set symbol. Um, they changed up where, where the toggle is for uh, foil. You can um, also um, uh, change uh, or add them to another deck easily. And then you can change the categories on here as well. So if you're building a deck and you have... Um, I find this most often with the the gods. Mm. Um, they default under enchantment, not under creature, yeah. um, which is sometimes not where you want them to be. Um, and sometimes you might have um, an artifact creature and you want it listed as ramp instead of as a creature so you can move them around very easily. Um, I just, I think it's really easy to use Architect. So if you don't use it, check it out. It's really good. And then I think one of, my favorite reasons is that you can select Card Kingdom and TCG as both of your prices. And um, seeing that we have a TCG affiliate link, it's nice to see how much it would cost um, to purchase the deck um, without basic lands. Um, so I'm looking right now at my Lysolda deck and I can see the cost without the basics. Um, sometimes it's also just eye-opening how much you may or may not have put into a deck. You You thought your deck was really expensive and then you go... Oh, this deck's you know this deck's two hundred bucks, which that's that's not inexpensive. Or you look at it and like my Noyan Dar deck that I foiled out, and you're like, this deck, I am uncomfortable taking this to a game shop now because this deck is nineteen hundred dollars. I did not realize that by foiling out all but three cards, that I was carrying such um, something that makes me a little uncomfortable to to carry around. So that might be a webcam deck now. Yeah, never. <laughs> who, who knows? Never, never leave your cards in in your car, kids. Never, don't do never that. Do it. <laughs> and and don't leave your cards unattended at a game shop as much as you know everyone there. You there's don't know so many people there. that walk in. Well, you know the locals, but you don't know everyone that walks in. I I I always have my cards with me when I'm mm-hmm. out. Um You're gonna look how, like a turtle walking around that shop the whole time with your giant backpack on, but your your cards will be safe. I haven't put a backpack on since a long time ago now. I thought this was gonna go into like Back in my day. <laughs> Back on my pack. No. Um, next question. How often do we update each of our decks? Um, so it's, I mean, it's at least, we at least look at it once a set, for sure, yeah. at yeah. bare minimum. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, well, I'm, I, not even, not even. I haven't touched Edric since February, which means I have not looked at it since oh. uh, Akoria came out. So clearly I have not looked at all 28 of my decks. <laughs> Nope. T- typically I'll look at, you know, I, I, it's, it's difficult to go through each one individually, but typically when we're going through spoiler season, Andy and I are texting each other every two seconds, screenshot sent, this would go great in this. Screenshot sent, this would go great it in is this. every two seconds. If you're in our discord and you've turned off our notifications, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. For sure. Don't turn them off though. Sometimes I want to chat with you though. Anyway. But, uh, um, it, it would just have to come to mind during the spoilers there's going to be some corner case cards every once in a while that won't exactly come to mind. Um, and I guess it's just whenever it comes to mind, you can go, oh, shoot, yeah, that is a good upgrade. I should go do that for that deck. But, I mean, it, there isn't, like, a particular day. I don't go, like, once a month, first of the month, go, what's new for this deck? Let's go check it out. Um, 
after playtesting. You obviously. don't. I have that on my calendar as recurring. Oh, you do, reminder. huh? No, I, yeah. It's a, is it is it is it once a year and it's on your birthday and it's just a really good excuse to buy cards for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and I have it so my Outlook calendar blocks my time so yeah. show as busy. Yeah. So don't call me. My phone is set to out of office. You know <laughs> what are you doing? EDH rec. Yeah. Thirty the, minutes. The the alert also automatically brings up the web page through our affiliate link. Obviously, <laughs> it does, and it asks me if I want to you know um, schedule a Teams meeting yeah. with video and voice call you know mm-hmm. i could the, you know the whole shebang oh, it's perfect now, you know just because we're looking at this i pulled up edric and it looks like two two new suggestions which i i get fierce guardianship the free spell the Absolutely. free blue spell um but also reconnaissance mission which is whenever a creature you control deals damage to a player you may draw a card which is what edric already has which is redundant in biden of thassa and in coastal um, piracy coastal piracy so you can have your third version of this card it's pretty good do i want it yes is it necessary no is but it the card is it the is... same mana cost as coastal piracy or is it one more N- no they're all the same they're all four reconnaissance mission is two blue blue bite nathasa is two blue blue oh. and um actually i'm not even seeing coastal piracy listed in the top because they probably just replaced it oh it's also two blue blue oh perfect so good job four... good job wizards you you're consistent yeah yeah, so you can have a really cool um, piratey ghost ship with skeleton people throwing people over the you know over the bow. That's the which one's the bow? Is this the bow? Or I'm just making boats. The speak. bow. The bow is the front. <laughs> you know, boat speak. Yeah, boat speak. <laughs> this looks like he's being thrown over the side. What's the boat speak for the side of the boat? Which side? The right side or the left side? The side I'm looking at appears to. Appears if I'm looking at the front of the boat, it's on my left. What's okay, that side? so all all perspective for boat sides is when you're <laughs> on the boat, right? I'm assuming I'm the skeleton on the boat, looking at the front of the boat. So and you're throwing them off to the right. And I'm throwing them off to my left. To your left, okay. Left is going to be your port, where port, right is your like, starboard. It looks like this big guy's being thrown off the port. Okay, <laughs> port side, port side. You're going to learn one thing about boats today, and you're going to remember it for the rest of your life. Ready? So if you want to know between port and starboard, which one is left or right, which one has more R's in the word? Starboard. So that one's to your right and port's to your left. And then there's wow. bow and stern. Wow. I did learn something today. Yeah. I don't that... own a boat. <laughs> <laughs> but you took boat or safety, I assume. In, nope. In... No, they, they, stopped that, they stopped that the year before me. Oh, well, I didn't, I don't have a boat and I didn't grow up with a family of boats, but now I know (laughs) coastal piracy, I'm throwing off port side and I'm going to reference it when I play this card going forward in my Edric deck. To bring this full circle, we don't make enough updates to our decks because we have too many. (laughs) Can you imagine having 565 commander decks? I can can imagine it. But the thing I'm imagining more is the amount of money I have to buy that many decks. To be fair, they did say that they have been building those commander decks for 12 years. Okay. So that that was actually a qualifier in the response. They were like, uh, my my collection's 25 years in the making, commander decks 12 years in the making, but that's still a lot of commander decks each year. Maybe they're all the commander and 99 basic lands. No, you can only do that with Ashling. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So it was it was five sixty five divided by twelve equals forty seven decks a year. That's a lot of decks. Oh my goodness! And but check out Cure for the Common Game on Twitter. Really cool account. I love all the stuff that they post about. And, and he's got such a really he's got like a commander wall where he's got all of his decks in like clear glass cases and mm. they're all labeled. I mean, it is. It is organized. And I'm over here trying to find my Edric deck, and I don't know if it's in this room or if it's in my office <laughs> on a shelf. And he's got them all labeled. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong. See, but I was I was gonna mention it uh before when we were talking about um organizing our decks and trying to figure out like what card is in what deck. See, I have this I have this system in my house called the piles system. 
So if you've ever been, if you've ever been to my house, there's, I have. This there's, I have been. there's about four or five spots in the house where it looked like a card explosion happened. And each one of those card explosions has piles in them. And each pile is probably associated with a commander deck that I thought about building at one point in time. So not only do I have to find out if it's in a deck, I have to find out if it was in maybe a deck. By looking for its pile. You gotta look for its pile. There's always a theme to a pile. <laughs> so the last item is discussing when we take a deck apart. So when would we? Why would we? Um, I mean, I think the number one here is I usually take a deck apart if I don't like the strategy or I don't like what it's doing or I can't get it to work. And I think I've taken, I think I've taken two decks apart. One was for that reason. Another one was because I wanted to build a different deck and I, all of the, um, like mana base and almost everything that I needed was in that deck. And I said, well, if I'm already taking out 40 cards, the deck's just coming apart because I'm going to keep the other one built. So I took apart um, Exava Rakdos Blood Witch. I just could not um, get that one to... Not Blood... Uh, Rakdos... It's Exava. Is is it Rakdos Blood Witch? I think she's still a Blood Witch. Exava... Yeah, okay. Um, I, I was confusing. Yeah, it's Rakdos Blood Witch because it's also Lies Old of the Blood Witch, which mm-hmm. I changed it to. And I, I just couldn't get the deck to work. Now, there's been a lot that has happened since I had that deck built. That was one of the first original decks that I built. And um, we've now got a lot of cards that support the plus one plus one counter um, set, or, or I guess style in Rakdos with Stone, Stone Coil Serpent, Runaway Steamkin. Um, you've got the Riot cards from the new Ravnica set. So they, they work well with this. Um, cards that I hadn't initially thought about, like Renzo Dungeon Warden, a couple of things like that. Um, that's that, that's not, I guess, necessarily new since I built the deck. But um, the way that I built the deck was just I had 37 lands. I had a lot of ramp. I seemed to either get land screwed or land flooded. And then when I did the things it was supposed to do, I got I just got really outpaced. Now Xava is giving other creatures haste if they have a plus one plus one counter on them. So not necessarily the strongest strategy. And she has unleash herself as a three three that can become a four four that has first strike haste and can't block. It didn't work. I wasn't happy with it, so I just took that apart. And then I also had a Zedru the Great Hearted that I took apart. Yeah, um, because that man, mana base turned into a different deck. But I think I take decks apart when I just I can't get it to work, or I really just need too much from it that it's just not worth keeping partially assembled until I replace those swapped cards. Sure, mine is typically like new hotness needs all the staples, so yeah. I'll take a deck apart um, <clears throat> for for Otrimi. Uh, that I just built, I wanted. I knew mutate itself was kind of. Um, it's a high. I, I don't want to say a weak mechanic. Uh, it's a high mana cost mechanic. So I wanted to make sure that the mana base was hundred um, percent with that. So I started taking some pieces from other decks, um, trying to keep them together as much as possible. The Hogak deck stayed together, even though I borrowed some fetch lands from it. But my Kenrith, the Returned King Wheels deck has been taken apart now for sure um, in building that and building my Zergo Helm Smasher deck. So I don't typically take a deck apart. I I was trying to think of like, was there ever a time I took a deck apart because I wasn't having fun with the deck or the deck wasn't doing what it was supposed to do? Um, I think SRAM probably was just kind of boring when I built it. But yeah. It, it did what it was supposed to do, and I now I have all the equipment, and I can build any equipment deck that I would want. Um, I never... I shouldn't say never, because it's actually not true even right now. I was going to say I never have two mono black decks. That's not true. Um, but, like, if there's two decks that are going to do almost identical to the same thing, I won't have both built at the same time. So my Shirei and my Ayara deck will not be built at the same time, because they're just mono black, aristocrat, sacrifice bring stuff back um but i will go back and forth between them i know we talked about how we don't like swapping cards between decks it's not something i want to do on a daily basis but it is something i would do on a quarterly basis just to mix things up yep yep i agree so um and i think when i take a deck apart i still don't take it off of um archideck so that i can see where i last last 
last left off, mm -hmm. you can build it back up to that point and then change it up. Um, but I would suggest, I think you might be surprised if you're not logging your decks online, you might be surprised with what what you do and don't have. You know, I had a deck a deck where I, I put it into Architect and realized I only had 33 lands and I was always struggling and I was not understanding why. And it was because I just, I don't know what I was, you know, when I had it in my hand, I, I guess I just didn't realize that I only had 33. So I added three lands and two rocks to it. And I just took out cards that I was realizing I, I was not happy with anyway. Mm -hmm. Whether it was because I couldn't cast them because I never had the mana or they weren't <laughs> doing much. I, that remains to be seen at this point. Yeah. Um, but so, yeah, so that's that's when I do that. Earlier so. when you were talking about how Judge Anthony and I both write our lists down and you build yours in Architect. <clears throat> so when I'm at work and I have a little bit of time like between assignments or between documents loading or something... Um, I do want to say Architect's mobile um, interface is really good. I enjoy it. The The only tidbit I would want to give you is make sure you hit save because it doesn't auto save your deck list all Always the time. Always save. Always, Always save. save. I kind of wish they had a feature where you can turn on auto save, but I understand that would put a big load on their servers. So maybe that's why they can't do it. Um, so that's the only thing I would ask to be changed. But uh, it, it's super nice to actually just build your mana base up in Architect um, instead of counting down from 63 like i have 63 cards i can put in this deck because that leaves me with 37 lands at the end but if you want to see all your lands you want to see all your rocks um all together so you can make a better determination uh, about what you want to do for the rest of your deck and for its curve um, on top of the fact that they do automatically have some calculators in there as well to tell you how many of your cards are you know black compared to green compared to blue um, and then also how mana intensive each color is in case you want to change your mana base up that way. So even if you have 20 green cards, if they're all one pip green and you have 10 black cards that are all four pip black, it'll give you both of those pieces of data to help you mold your mana base. So definitely, definitely, definitely you can use it uh, for a tool like that. Yeah, Architect is great. So check them out. And um, I think that's, you know, there's we could talk... A lot more obviously about how we manage our decks right for sure um but i think that's those were the main items that that had come up that we wanted to address today mm -hmm. um and i know you mentioned it earlier um you just built an otremi deck do you Ooh. want to walk us through the strategy behind your otremi deck and um what we can expect to see on stream later i am going to do my best to walk you through what otremi really is down to its core Okay. which is mutate and that's it so what the, this deck all it that's is, it it's right, it that's it's the end of the mutate. show it's got it's mutate <laughs> it has um every legal mutate card in sultai uh built in um on top of we have our froggy boy uh who i can't remember the name of right now who isn't a mutate creature um but does care about mutate. This is Polywog Symbiote, where each creature spell you cast costs one generic less to cast if it has mutate. Whenever you cast a creature spell, if it has mutate, draw a card, then discard a card. Um, every other card that mentions mutate that is Sultai um, importance, if you will, I think there's a green creature where you gain life and put plus one plus one counters. There's a colorless egg where you get plus one plus one counters. Those cards do not make it into the deck. Um, I th I deemed it more appealing to go for cards that have unblockable or flying or uh, other keywords that I could take advantage of, um, such as Baleful Strix, which you know we're seeing a reprint of, um, which has flying and death touch. It's a black and a blue. Um, and when it enters the battlefield, you draw a card. And it's a 1-1, one, one, but we're going to mutate on top of it, and we're going to make it a 6-6 six, six commander flying death touch, and it'll be great. So... <laughs> Um, the things that really power up this deck, again, I talked about uh, my mana base earlier. We're playing 37 lands, we're playing every legal fetch land that we can, um, and we're playing every legal duel that we can, uh, beside revised duels, because I don't own any, um, to try to make the mana base as consistent as possible. Um, we are looking at a lot of different colors in Sultai. This is a very balanced deck that, uh, in terms of color. Um, but again, very mana intensive. So we're going to run uh, 11 artifacts where one of these artifacts is not ramp. Um, and that's Vidalkin Ori. 
aside Vidalcan Ori, we're also playing the enchantment Leyline of Anticipation. So Vidalcan Ori and Leyline of Anticipation both allow me to cast my spells as if they had flash, which is very, very important um, for the mutate strategy. Uh, there are some mutate creatures um, like Dirge Bat, which do already have flash. Uh, Dirge Bat says whenever this creature mutates, destroy target creature or planeswalker and opponent controls. Um, but allowing all of your mutate creatures to have flash uh, makes it so that you can use a lot of these effects as combat tricks, which can be very, very powerful. Um, for instance, there's an uncommon mutate creature that a lot of people just overlook because they think it just costs way too much mana. It's not going to do much, but I can attest that it does a lot. And that's Archipelagor. Archipelagor is a seven mana Leviathan that you can mutate for six, so five and a blue. It says whenever this creature mutates, uh, tap up to X target creatures, where X is the number of times this creature has mutated. Those creatures don't untap during their controller's untap step. Um, so being able to, you know, it, obviously if someone's not playing a creature deck, maybe that one isn't the most powerful, um, but that means you can just swing in for your with a 7-7, seven, seven, so it's going to win out either way. Um, the face commander isn't that exciting for this deck, uh, other than the fact that it does have mutate. It's Otrimi, the ever playful, for six mana. Uh, three generic, a black, a green, and a blue. You get a legendary creature, Nightmare Beast, 6-6 six, six, Trample. It says whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, return target creature card with mutate from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, the mutate cost is only four, so one, and then the Sultai colors. Um, so... Just to have another mutate come out of the command zone can be pretty powerful. To make your creature a 6-6 six, six on its face and for it to be your commander on its face is also pretty powerful. Um, the one big problem I have with this deck, and I think I am going to add a few cards um, to make it a little bit better, is the fact that exile removal destroys this deck. It absolutely... And I, and I, mean that ironically it doesn't destroy the deck it, it exiles the deck so otrimi allows you to get back your mutate creatures from the graveyard if they ain't going to the graveyard you ain't getting them back and there's only one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen i think 15 mutate creatures so if you have one stack of six and it gets exiled the whole pile gets exiled and you, you might be out of the rest of the game, at least for your mutate strategy. So what I would recommend, and hopefully I'll be able to make a revision to this, is actually putting some sacrifice outlets in the deck um, to make it so that if someone does try to spot exile or uh, board removal exile creatures, I can sacrifice them real quick and at least get them into my graveyard where I can potentially recur them later. Um, other than that, we're valuing out our opponents. We're killing them with commander damage. Let's go. Um. I, I'm glad you mentioned exiling at the end there, because I mm -hmm. really, you know, look at you segueing right into what I what I uh, was talking about earlier. So I promised I would mention this. So we played a game with this, and I had out the card Athreos Shroud Veiled, the um, box topper god from Theros Beyond Death. And Athreos says at the beginning of your end step, put a coin counter on another target creature, and then whenever a creature with a coin counter on it dies or is put into exile, return it to the battlefield under your control. So we were playing, and I put a coin counter on Coil's merged, I'm sorry, um, mutated commander mm -hmm. pile. Okay, mm -hmm. So it was his commander. Oh, Dreamy and five other cards. It was a big old stack. <laughs> so as we're playing, there was a question on stream that came up, and there wasn't a judge playing with us. We normally have a judge playing, so we can get our questions answered. And um, I said, well... Let's deal with it when we get to it. Yeah. And then we got to it pretty quickly after. And I said, mm -hmm. crap. So I messaged in, in our Discord and, and asked one of our judges. I said, what happens here? And they said that, um, I said, if it's combined, will all of the, the creatures on the stack come back? And I said, um, if yes, which one stays on top if they come back as a, a mutated pile, right? So they come back separately. And I said, but I know the commander can be put in the command zone. And it was... Um, there were some questions, and um, they confirmed that um, if the commander uh, has is part of that pile and has the coin counter on it, mm -hmm. the commander and every single mutated creature comes back under my control separated. So Athreos's coin gets around 
moving a, a creature that that to the command zone. So um, it didn't do me any good. I got them all back and then died before my next turn. But <laughs> I still got them all, and you that did. felt really, really good. Um, so um, I guess we did also confirm, we said, can they put Otrevi in the command zone instead? And they said they can, but Athreos' trigger still stacks because it's moving between face-up zones. So even though they chose to put it in the command zone, Athreos does return it from there. So um, you're not going to get a mutated pile. You're going to get a bunch of mutated, a, a bunch of separated creatures that have mutate. But I mean, I'll still, I'll still take a pile of five creatures. Yeah, and then you died and they all got exiled and I couldn't bring them back. <laughs> That did, yeah, that did happen. That did happen. Did you lose that game? I think you did. Yeah, yeah. I haven't, I haven't won a game with Otrimi yet. Um, Maybe I'll up, change uh, tonight. Upgraded Otrimi. I've only played one game. O for one right now. So we're That's getting okay. there. That's okay. That's but, okay. But I did Archipelagor the Gorkaw Gorklaw players board. I think three turns in a row. So he didn't get to play. Yeah, you kept stuff tapped down. You were a very controlling mutate deck. And then he killed me. <laughs> deservedly <laughs> well that's it for our episode this week thank you all for listening um if you want to contact us you can find our podcast on twitter at guardian pod you can find me um on twitter at at flory you can find me on twitter at worm coil engine um and you can also email us at guardian project pod at gmail.com um if you're on discord and you want to join the discussion come hang out there's a lot of uh, commander games being set up um, we'd love to have you and we'd be happy if you join so send us a message and we will get you invited to the discord channel and um we will see you streaming on wednesdays and thursdays no nope. wednesdays and fridays wednesdays we and fridays thursdays we don't I will be thursdays. streaming more um once i'm done with grad school um so i'll have more time to devote to magic so that will happen in the future don't know if it's gonna be thursday but um we're we're playing around with some times and what we're gonna do with wednesday streams we've been doing brawl um but we've seen a lot of interest in regular paper commander so we're trying to figure out what we're gonna do with that so stay tuned um and we will be back next week with episode 51 we're almost there we're almost to one year. One whole year for you. One whole a little year. Bit for me. Less, a little bit less than me. A little bit less. Um, see you next week. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> that was aggressive. <laughs> you gotta be aggressive. B E aggressive. I heard people say that phrase. And they said, B, B, aggressive. I've never heard it that way before. I thought it was B, B, not B, E. I thought they spelled B. I B, don't aggressive. Know. B, E, aggressive. No, I think you're wrong. I don't know why you'd say B twice in a row. That doesn't make any sense. You tell me if that makes sense. All right. Jury's out. <laughs>